WOTP Radio right here, Dirty Worm Podcast. I'm at a live remote location, just chilling. I got an Austin beast. I'm trying to think when I first met this dude. I don't even know when I first met this dude. I just met him. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I'm a dinosaur. I'm old. But I can tell you this dude's a beast. I respect him a lot. I've always respected the movement. It's from one of the biggest hip-hop crews in ATX, in my opinion. I definitely think that's a real, a real thing when I'm saying the biggest. I'm going to say it's the biggest. The biggest ATX hip-hop crew movement I've ever seen. They were like the, the, the Mexican Wu-Tang Clan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no other than my man, Big Dirty. What's up, Dirty? Dirty's in the building, yeah. What, what's the deal, y'all? How y'all doing? Man, what's going on with you, man? What's, what's happening, man? Welcome to the show. Welcome to WOTP Radio. We put the wig on the pig and do it big. Well, it's, it's an honor to be here, you know what I'm saying? Not, not too many people get me to come out the house, man. You you one of the many, you know? You know, I had to, I had to you know, do the thing, man, and make it, make it happen, you know what I'm saying? But what you been doing during yeah, this quarantine? What's been man, going on? I've been on? chilling, man. Really, uh, my boy Don Lee just came home, man. He's been gone about 12 and a half years. So he's actually one of the people I started doing this music shit with. And he didn't get to see the actual, you know, blow up of everything that, that came through the city. So now we sitting in the studio every day we can. And we're working on something like that. I really, really ain't been working on too much music for myself. I do beats for other people. You know, I record a couple cats here and there. But... He's about to get me back in that studio for sure. We've done about four or five tracks already, so that's dope. Yeah, you know you got to pivot. That's what I tell people: you got to you got to start to pivot and try something new. That's what I pivoted and did. This I finally said, "Fuck it, man. get out here." And yeah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like this is something I wanted to do too. You know what I'm saying? I just like I said, I be lazy, so I don't get up and do the shit. You, you do be kind of lazy because I remember getting at you a couple of times, like, "Dirty, when you come back to the game, the game <laughs> needs you, man. What's up?" He was yeah. like, "Ah." <laughs> I was here a couple times. Come on, man. When you going to do it? Ah. Yeah, you know, because you find other ways. Make, you know, I got a lot of kids and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? So you find other ways to make money. Time goes over there. I feel you. Over here. You know, the, the checks come. You know, we get them checks that come in the mail, you know, but. That's nice, though, right? It just yeah, show up. Just show, I got one today. I was like, hell yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, it always come right when you. Yeah. When you not even it. thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and, and the goal is just to get it to where it's happening twice a week. Yeah, straight every up. other week. I, yeah. During this quarantine, I seen that it jumped like super jump for me, like three, four hundred percent. Like it's crazy. I was like, damn, y'all really out sitting at home listening to music. You know what I'm saying? Well, now you're understanding too. Like every time you drop a single or something new, mm-hmm. your back catalog yeah, starts starts moving. Starts moving. Yeah. So now you understand when I used to always to say like, man, y'all got to get y'all catalog up, man, so that yeah. your back catalog starts selling like. I'm getting ready to release my very first album, my first solo album that ever came out on uh, Bodyhead Entertainment. Oh, no shit. And I'm waiting to see how the numbers are going to act because that was 20 years ago. Yeah. See, I got a bunch of shit that, like, I never put out digitally. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, me and you, we old school, man. We come from the time where you could sell CDs. And I love that shit. And I used to hit the road and make shitloads of money doing that. Hell yeah. But it's like, man, nah, nobody wants to hear that old shit. But people always hit me up for it. <laughs> so it's like, all right, I'll put it out there. But it's for somebody... Who, who's never heard of me, I would hate for that to be the first thing they hear, you know, the, the, the low quality, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the bad mix beats and shit, you know what I mean? But I, I feel you, but I don't know, Master P, though, man, like, yeah. when he first came out, that shit was garbage. Super. <laughs> but but yeah. now when I hear it, I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. it just got that feeling to it. So that, you know, I learned from that to know that sometimes that's just all you need, man. Like, I don't know. They just, like it, they like it. You know? Yeah. That's crazy. That's what people tell me. They like that shit more than they like the new shit. And I'm like, man, but you ain't hear that fucking quality? Like, Yeah, well, you know how you're getting better as an artist. Yeah. I got to say, man, I've watched you grow. And I'm telling you, I ain't even capping. That that one, that Fortnite joint, that's my <laughs> shit, man. That's my shit, too, man. I be in the gym and shit. Motherfuckers be like, what, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Man, that's my joint, man, right there. And the video you came with and all that, I thought that was just so dope, man. I was like, man. I just had to do something different, you know what I mean? Dirty like, has arrived. Yeah, like, I was like, you know, I ain't done nothing. Shit, it's probably been like seven years before I dropped that one, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, fuck it. Because, man, I, I put an album out before that, and it was, uh, 
the Dirty Brigante album when I changed my name from the Big Dirty to Dirty Brigante. And, uh, man, I, I didn't push that album like I should have. And it had great features. You know what I'm saying? I had Trey on it. I had Flesh and Bone on it. Uh, Flatline, rest in peace. I had yeah, big name. On. Yeah, big name. I spent like shit, you know, 50, 60 grand putting that motherfucker together. Jeez. And then I was like, man, I need to go recoup this. And I bought, and it was still it teetering where you could still sell albums. You know what I'm saying? So I bought a bunch of albums, went out there, did a little bit, but I never did the full blown promo that I should have. Right. And then I was like, ah, you know, we started doing other things. We had a, we ended up opening the shoe store uh, over here on Thompson Lane. It's, it's downtown MLK now, but. You know, we just started doing other things. And then we got into the uh, promotion. We started bringing all the artists down and shit. And we were like, you know what, man? Fuck, I, I can't hit the road right now. I got other shit going on. And it just kind of went on the back burner. And then from there, it just trickled down to where, yeah, you're not doing shit no more. Oh, fuck but it. it was it was cool watching y'all grow, man. I've been out there to that shoe store. Yeah. And I thought that was just dope. The pivot. I always call it the pivot. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was dope, man. Just, just seeing y'all grow. I remember y'all had the, the bus. Yeah, we pulled out a candy bus and shit. You know what I'm saying? And just when y'all would do y'all shows, the whole hood come out. I'd be like, damn, they brought the whole hood out, this yeah, motherfucker. He, we used my I had he. super support, man. And that, and that was one thing, you know, in, in, uh, I can always say that shit. I got a lot of love from the city. You are listening to Even WOTP though, Radio. You know, some people do, some people don't. I don't know. We just, you know, I guess because we had the streets already. We was in the street, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. they just like, fuck, it's something to do, and. Man, we used to, I remember, what was before we used to do, like, Ruta Maya. I remember doing the back room. And, uh. Shout out to James Dean. Yeah, yeah. James Dean. Because that's my, man, I've known James Dean since before any of this music shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, i known them boys since fucking high school and shit. And before that, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, man, when he when he got the back room, I, don't, I, I think it was Carnival Beats we did that first show with. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had did a show with Carnival Beats first time and. Man, there was like three, four hundred people in that motherfucker, and it was just us and them. And it was like, damn, like, hey, this is something serious. We can, you know, we can do something yeah. out here. It was, I remember we used to see y'all all the time, and a lot of people, I don't know, people don't really like to listen to other people's advice, but I always took everything that you told me and applied it to the shit that I knew, and it worked. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's like all all that shit about the, the the catalogs and you know what I'm saying, everything, the branding, shit like that. Like, man, we we took all that shit and. Ran with it. No, I saw it. I saw it. And then y'all pulled up with a bus. I was like, look at these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool, man. Like, like I said, I've been seeing the growth. I've watched it. I've even seen, like, uh, I would call it the new passing of the torch of PIE, like with Tone. Yeah. I've been seeing Tone do his thing. Tone, you need to do some shows, though, man. Come on, man. man I, try to get, I try to get them out there on the road, <laughs> man. And, you know, like Gotta I said, get out it's, there. it's hard. Like, he... Yeah. He dropped content all day. You know all the saying? time. I say, That's all I ever see him doing. He probably got like 20 albums sitting there he ain't telling nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I, probably got two albums of his sitting in my computer that he don't even fucking remember. You know what I'm saying? Right. He just, he drops, he, and then he does his own videos, you know what I'm saying? And, and he edits his own videos. So he's he's out there. Moving, he's been like, doing, he's been, he's been doing great, man. Yeah. Like, I got to say, for an independent artist, he's been doing great. Mm-hmm. And he learned from y'all, watching y'all, and, you know what I mean, just seeing that whole transition. I thought that was dope. Yeah, he'll, you know how I, I met Tone? I was coming out of, uh, in Fairway, we was in the projects over there, and uh, I was moving my microphone to my new apartment and shit. He was outside sitting on the uh, back of a car, and he's like, you want to make a million dollars with that? And I was like, shit, I'm going to make a million dollars <laughs> without it, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of brushed him off that time. I was like, yeah. man, whatever, dude. Fuck this dude. I don't know this dude. <laughs> so, you know, you know, back then, we in that, that mind state, that young mind state. So I, I take off, and my DJ, T-Kid, shout out T-Kid, actually introduced me to him probably like, I don't know, three weeks later. I guess he had kept bugging the kid about getting in the studio, and kid's like, man, I ain't getting in the fuck his kids. He's like me, you know, I'm doing other things. We're getting this money. Yeah. He's like, but I know I know a guy will get you in. My boy Dirt will get you in. So then... Kid introduced me to him, and I was like, "All right, fuck it, let's see what you got." And I put him in there, and he spit. I was like, "Damn, this boy can rap," but he couldn't. He couldn't keep his breath at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he used to smoke real bad and shit, so he could. He, he rapped fast, but he couldn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I started kind of coaching him into it, and then you know he took off from there. Like he was like, "Shit, fuck it." You know, he ain't looked back ever since. You know what I mean? That's dope. Well, he out there killing it now and doing his thing. I be seeing. Seem like every time I, every Monday or something, I turn on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, check out my new check out my new song. Like, damn, this nigga, I was dropping a new song. Yeah. 
I done lost count. I done lost. Me this. too. Sometimes I, I I think I already uh shared the motherfucker. It's a new one. Like, what the hell? I just shared this shit out. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, come on, man. But I think I said that to him one time. You got to slow down, man. Work work yeah. each song, man. Work that shit. And you got to do some shows. Yeah, I tell him the same shit, man. Like, you know, <laughs> I guess he got so much of it, he don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not me. I sit on a song for six months. Motherfucker, it took me a long time to write that shit. <laughs> I remember... I know, I think I came to a party y'all had or something. No, y'all invited me somewhere. It was deep in the hood, too. It was in some deep, deep in there. Like, I had to get a pass and shit and all <laughs> kind of shit. And niggas on the corner, green light me through. Oh, yeah, yeah, that smack. He cool, he cool. Yeah, no, Let the barricade up. Let, you know, I'm like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> I remember I came to a party, and then, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks later, I did a track, and I just heard you on the track. Like, ah, yeah. oh, this is dirty right here. Yeah. So I'm going to just hit him up. Yeah. Here, nigga, here's, here's a track. And we did that uh, Let's Go. I remember doing the video. Yeah, we got there on, in 2-1 on the east side up in yeah. the, uh, the creek. Yeah, and that was cool, up. man. And we just came out and knocked it out and yeah. turned around and put it right out. And he was like, damn, that was fast. And I was like, yeah, man, I ain't bullshitting. Like, yeah, you be moving. We're going to put this shit out. And then, uh, But, yeah, man, those were the days, man. Like, Yeah, man. I used to love that shit. You know, we'd be everywhere. Every every concert, even if it had nothing to do with us, we was all there. Like it was a big unity. Like there were, you know, you you run into other artists, you know, people like uh Basswood Lane, DJ Grip, Gerald G, who would always be there, you know, James Dean always be there, criminals be there. It yeah. just, you know, and, and it was it, it turned into a whole lot of love, man. A lot, you know, big family out of town. You 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 know, we be with each other in different cities and shit, you know, the uh, the league, you know. I put the league in one big circle now because that's what they call themselves. But there was a lot of them back then. It was COD, the uh, South yeah. Mile, you know, Dress Guy. A lot of, you know. Yeah. So a collective. That, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, that shit was fun to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I remember, too, like, everywhere. It seemed like everywhere I went in Austin, I'd be all of a sudden at a stoplight at the back of somebody's car. And I was like, you got the PIE on the back of the window? Everywhere I went, I kept seeing. I said, "Damn, these motherfuckers everywhere, deep like a motherfucker." You know what yeah, I mean? I thought that was so cool though, because that was promotion. You know what I mean? That was yeah. that was big, man. I was trying to get my group to do that, but I was the only one. They were like, "Man, I ain't putting that shit on the back of my car." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm putting on my shit." Wait, man. Some some people we just did it. We're like, "I'm putting you in the car." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shit, I don't give a fuck what you, you ain't got say. no choice. Yeah, but now like. I had a little homeboy, my little homeboy John. He used to have a Tahoe. I don't know if you remember him and Alex. They had a green Tahoe. We wrapped the whole I think motherfucker I seen, up. Yeah, I think I seen that. It wasn't even our car. We wrapped the motherfucker <laughs> up. Like, that's a billboard, bro. We need that shit. Yeah, but I think that's so cool, man. Y'all got a big legacy from that was like what? What year was those? Shit. Like 2004? Was it? Yeah, five maybe. Yeah, because I think, aren't y'all on, uh, I was watching the other day, I was watching uh, a DVD of ours, and I think y'all were in. Standing in the background. Shit, maybe. And I was drunk, talking shit. And I said, that's dirty in there in the background. <laughs> and uh, I was doing that, uh, I keep my hat so low so you're going to see what I'm saying. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was doing all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, those back rooms was the days, though. Man, I missed that. That's when hip-hop was really just thriving hard. And everybody was different. Everybody yeah. kind of had their own little niche. Yeah. Now it's like. Yeah, everybody are. rap same. Everybody mm-hmm. got the same cadence. Exactly. You know? Yeah, we're talking about that. I'm pulling up right now. We're like, man, these do sound the same. Fuck. It all sounds the same. The beats are the same. Just, just everything. Yeah. I, I don't know if that comes with old age or just you know what I'm saying it's just what it is. But I don't know. That's well, how I, heard, I feel. You know what I mean? I heard people say it's now more of a vibe, which I always thought that's what we were doing. Yeah. It was a vibe, but it's like, man, all y'all on the same vibe though. But I guess, I mean, you could put it like the screw music. You know what I'm saying? It was all different, but it was the same. So, you know. Yeah. People do their own thing. That shit was dope. So what's going to be new for y'all? What y'all got coming up or what's? Man, I mean, right now we quarantined, so we just chilling. But I really want to get back into these concerts when shit starts moving. And like I said, my boy Dove Don, he he been gone 12 and a half years. He just came home about a month ago, so. Okay. We're getting in this studio, and we're going to start working like nothing changed. Because, man, start me, and, stacking them. me and this guy right here used to uh, we used to pass around a tape recorder in my car, freestyling, you know what I'm saying, on cassette tape. That's how long ago we've been rapping, you know what I'm saying? We turned, okay. 
we used to figure out exactly you how, are listening to how loud the radio had to be radio. to sound good. And then we rap, on, you know what I'm saying, to make yeah. tapes and shit, like, long time, 90s, you know what I'm saying, long time ago. I know y'all hear the speed racer cars. We out here outside because of the quarantine. Yeah, hell yeah, six feet apart. We in the air, we in the, we in the air, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's good, man, to uh, keep pivoting, keep bringing in some new, yeah. pass the torch around a little bit. I mean, you know, I always say I'm not rapping no more, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Once the yeah, beats man, kick on, it's on. You I, know? Didn't, I didn't like when you was doing that bush. I said, what this nigga talking about? He ain't talking about he ain't gonna rap no more. You know, but, you I, know. but I get it because there was a period of time where I was tired of it too. I was just, I wasn't tired of rapping really. I was just tired of playing the game. Yeah. Because that's what a lot of artists don't understand when they get in this game. You get in and you get to a certain level to where you got to start playing the game. Yeah. And that's just, just. Uh, I, I used to. I remember I used to sit at the house on the edge of my bed and just be like, "Do I really want to go out here and say what's up to a bunch of niggas? I don't even give a fuck." Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And all of them go, "Yo, yo, man, let's hook up. Let's do lunch." Oh, bro, that's the worst. When I you mean lunch, you mean you want me to buy lunch? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's how they do me. Let's do yeah. lunch. Oh, you mean you want me to buy you yeah, lunch? You the rapper. You the rich. And, one. Nothing, and nothing's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I got tired of doing that. I got tired of just. But then every now and then I still had to get up and be like, man, let me go down here. And, yeah. and then it got to a point where people started thinking I was being an asshole. Because yeah. even females I knew, they would be like, I saw you and you didn't even say what's up. I said, well, you know, you, you hanging with the rap dude. I don't know, man. I, I just I just try to stay away because I, I just don't know, man. Like, yeah. here you go, this nigga jealous now or mad. Yeah. And it's like, you mad at, you mean the model chick? In the rap game? Come on, man. Stop. That, that was something, man, I had to learn that from the <laughs> jump. I know you remember that shit. We, we, it, it was Uh-oh. a blessing and it wasn't a blessing. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, like, when we came in this, we were all street cats. We ain't understand how motherfuckers yeah. start rap beefing with each other. And, you know, you being disrespectful to me, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. It, it took me a while to stop fucking people up and realize, you know what I'm saying? That's just part of this shit. If you want to be in here, you got to deal with it because... The bigger you get, the more you can't get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't exactly. go blow your car up no more because everybody know the fuck I am. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that gangster yeah. shit had to sit back, and it kind of changed me into a different person. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I, you know, trickle over the edge, but it's like, man, nah, I know better. I know better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it it was a curse and a blessing because for a while, nobody wanted us to, to come to their shows no more. They were like, I remember fuck, that. Fuck y'all. Fuck them. They, they don't say they don't to act. I remember I had to come out and. Yeah. Break up something. Like, hey, man, what are y'all doing, man? Y'all tripping? No, nah, man, fuck this. My man smack. I'm about to set it off in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, man, come on, y'all, man. What did he do? No, nah, man, he was on this show talking all this shit. I'm like, oh, dog. Yeah, yeah. See, like, but but <laughs> that took us to another level. We were like, you know what? They don't want to get on the show. I do my own fucking show. Fuck it. I thought that was great. And, that and, was great. And, it, you know, it trickled into something more. You know what I'm saying? And I think that helped us more because then doing our own shows, we got to put ourselves on a flyer and, you know what I'm saying? Who had Kevin Gates and uh, Dirk Brigante or Tex Garcia or, you know, a little tone. And, and, and it's my show, so I'm making my artist as large as the motherfucker that's, that's headlining exactly. the show. And it started, you know, it, 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 that kind of worked for us. And then, and then uh, I know you remember, uh, what the fuck is it? That, that local access channel. We used to have a 512, Mike Hunt show. Yeah. That shit, right? Man, I still get people like, man, I remember seeing y'all motherfuckers on the bridge rapping. Oh, yeah. Man. Take that shit down, Austin. <laughs> and, and that's what I, th- I thought y'all had definitely followed in our footsteps as far as doing your own shows. Because I didn't really, and still to this day, I don't really see a lot of groups, well, before this quarantine happened, I don't really see a lot of groups doing their own shows. Very few, very few. What I mean by their own shows is where it's them. Yeah. Y'all didn't need no openers. Oh. Nope. Y'all didn't need, it was y'all. Yep. That was it. Yeah. And that's what we used to do for a while. We used to be like, man, ain't nobody letting us on the shows. I'm going to do my own shows. Yeah. And just Fuck capitalize it. off our own fan base because we got a fan base big enough to just do us. Yeah. And I'm going to play some music videos. That's the opening act. Yeah. And then, and then, and then you know, I started spreading the love around. We're like, nah, man, y'all, y'all get on some of this because these cats, they're in the rock and they're in the hip hop. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I know we've been on a couple of your shows yeah. too. You know? That shit. <laughs> wow. Man. So that's what I'm saying. So then when y'all started doing that, I, I thought that was great, man, because I was like, yeah, that's that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, like, man, we used to sell our shows like it's crazy. Yeah, like, I, I came yeah. to the Do or Die one. 
I was at a couple, and then when y'all did the freestyle, um, yeah. who was that? Man, we y'all brought some old. Y'all brought yeah. an old school at uh, we Stevie B, uh, Little Susie. We brought Little yeah, Susie. We yeah, all sorts of people, man. But like yeah. before that, we used to be like doing Rudy Myers, three, four hundred people, and you know what I'm saying. And it was it was no headline. It was all locals. You know what I mean? And we shut that shit down. And they don't do that shit no more. Like I, I, I guess everybody want to open for somebody. And now everybody. What I don't like about it, especially the pay to play thing going on, I understood the pay to play because that's an old school tactic. Yeah. Here's the problem with the pay to play. If anybody could pay to get on the show, then anybody can, anybody can live your dream that you had to put blood, sweat, tears in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, true. I know people that come to me all the time and go, "Yeah, just record me." And how much does it cost to get on the show? Like, no, nah, it don't work like that. Man. And I would tell promoters that, like, you can't just let somebody jump on your show just because they got $600, man. Because when you do that, the value of your performance now is shit. Because it's like these people ain't even ready to perform. Mm -hmm. But because they got $600. So think about it. I would watch all kind of dudes that want to rap. Yeah. Really hype they self up. They got $600, $300. Oh, man, I'm going to open up for Paul Wall for my birthday. Yeah. So now they paying $300. They coming there with 25 dudes on the stage with them, and they, they they doing whatever, rapping. But to them, and they leave. And I used to always be like, why do all these acts come perform and leave? Yeah. And that, that used to bother me because I would be like, if you're a real artist, you want to see what else is on the bill so you know where you at. Yeah, straight up. And it's so when I kept seeing that, like, man, they, they keep coming in, and they'll perform, and they leave. I was like, oh, you, you got to be a rapper for a day. You got to take pictures. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of them people, they ain't around. <laughs> they ain't even around no you more. Know, they six that months came and, and they went, gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, you got, but I'm saying, yeah. if you get to pay for it, it's like it, it devalues what you do. It's yeah. like, dude, but I'm doing this for real. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I'm glad that little wave or whatever that was. I mean, it still keep coming back every now and then. Sometimes there's promoters that ask me to be on them shows, and I go, how many people on the show? We got about eighteen now, nah, bro. <laughs> eighteen <laughs> acts. I don't even, you could have, you could bring eighteen legends together, and I don't even want to see that show. Like that's, yeah, that's too long, though. Yeah. Give me about four or five, maybe, maybe six, maybe. And they got to be good ones to have. And six it got to be there. good one, and it got to be it got to run on time. It got to, you know what I mean? I remember we used to do, uh, when they did the big shows, like uh, the Beat used to do them shows, and if they were fucking starting at seven o'clock, I wouldn't get there. I didn't want to see four hours. I'm gonna be shit faced drunk by the time. You know, whoever come on, and you don't even remember that fucking show. You've been there so long, you just want to go home and shit. Right. Fuck that shit. Yeah, man. That's. But I don't. I don't see people doing that no more. Like, it's so easy to be a rapper now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get a microphone, and, SoundCloud, and, and yeah, you you don't have to spend money to to mix, master. You don't have to fucking go and get CDs. You don't have to leave your fucking house anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to do none of that shit. You just got to fucking be on Facebook. I mean, I guess it works because. Some and even during the in. quarantine, you've seen the new one. Now everybody can just do a live and rap. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, man, this is. Yeah. I'm just ready for this shit to be over and it, <laughs> it to get back. But I think what's going to come back first is the house parties. I keep saying this. I think it's going to start with it's going to go back to the old school. Yeah. When people had house parties, performances in their backyard. And somebody pull up. Yeah. Your, your, your homies DJing. The homie that's in the group that's trying to get his rap on, now he's rapping to 50 people. If them 50 people at the party like him, he's already starting with 50 people. Yeah. And I keep telling people, all you need is 50, and then all you're trying to do is get to a 1,000 tops. Yeah. That's more realistic. I know everybody wants to have millions of fans, 100,000 fans and shit like that, and I keep telling people, that's not really realistic. Your realistic level is a thousand worldwide. If you can get a thousand, hardcore, fans. you can do this shit for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah, you can quit your job and just sit back and do this. I mean, think about that. You, you drop an album and you get a thousand people to give you ten dollars. That's ten thousand dollars. Yeah, you know? you do three of those a year. You make thirty thousand dollars. You make more than McDonald's. Well, I always give this game away because I've been using this method since I came in, and people thought I was crazy when I said it. But I always break it down like this. You have 100 people, right? You have 100 fans. Your job is to get them 100 fans to spend $100 a year. How the fuck you do that, Smack? They ain't going to do that. Yeah, you do. 
You just break it down in quarters. So in January it comes, you drop your new single. February comes, you drop the video. March comes, you promote that you're about to have a show in April. Mm. And then you do the show. And there's at least going to be 50 people there. Yeah. And then you repeat. So that's the first quarter. Mm. You do that all four quarters. So you're going to come up with four singles every year. But now you've worked that one song. So now when they come to your show and watch you perform, which at that moment your show is probably 15 minutes long anyway, at least yeah. when they're watching you, they're going, I know this song. Yeah. Now they bought into it. But now you're getting them basically to spend. So just imagine that 100 right? trying to get them to spend $25 each quarter. Yeah. Tickets to the show, t-shirt. And A, hey, man, that's a And that by the time man. a year comes around, just do the math. They've spent $100 on you. Yeah. Yeah. And it just Now now times that times 100, 200 people, 300 people, 400 people, 500. Yeah. Now you go to San Antonio do it. Yeah. Go to see, Dallas and do it. Yeah. People don't see that though. They think they think that because you don't have, you know, 10,000 people running stadiums that you're not making money and they just don't they don't understand they can't work it and merchandise is a big one bro oh yeah that's like, where the money's man. at yeah that's where the money's that's at that's where all the money comes from we used to sell the fuck out of t-shirts bro like, yeah man. I pivoted on that a long time ago I was like man I saw that coming I was like man yeah because I was using that method because it was like okay they're spending $25 a quarter well they already got this t-shirt mm -hmm. so quarter two when we do a show I gotta come with a new t-shirt Quarter three, another one. Four, a new one. Now it's next year. I got to have another shirt. Another. Yeah. Then there's going to be somebody that comes, and they're, they're such a fan. They ain't buy, I'm the buying all of them. Yeah, I'm buying all that. Mm -hmm. So now it just keeps stacking more and more. And some fans, you know, they come and they go. Yeah. Some are die nice. hard and they stick around. So you, you got to kind of look at it like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot, of these, a lot of these artists out here, they, don't, they still don't understand that. And I keep telling them, where's your fan base? Then they'll, they'll clown somebody like, oh, man, you only had 10 people at your show or 20 people, 50 people. I'm like, dude, do the math on that. Yeah. If you have 50 people just, just showing paid. up to your show, yeah. $10. Yeah. I mean, there's just, you just got paid, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know. People, that's the thing. <laughs> hey, what it is, I think the, the media, the you know, the TV and shit got people blinded. They Everything's larger than life. You know what I'm saying? Like. On TV, everything's larger in life. But then when you start really meeting these people and shit, and you're like, nah, man. Yeah, and, and they're equating um, to likes Radio. and views to money. Yeah. It's like, no, bro. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that's the facade. Yeah. If you got a million if you, followers. If you got hella followers, more people will follow you. Yeah. But that, it don't mean nothing. Yeah. It really doesn't mean yeah. nothing. If like, they're not spending. You know, <laughs> I'd rather have 100 than a spending 100. I'd rather see somebody with 5,000 followers and go, okay, so he's got 5,000 followers, which probably means he has about a good solid 100 fans. Mm -hmm. He has a good solid 300, 400, maybe 500. I look at it like that, 10% of it. Yeah. 5,000, okay, you got 500. Yeah, most definitely. So like, now I can see how he's making money. If you're, if you're, getting him, if you're using that method – Getting them to spend twenty five dollars a quarter. Yeah, most definitely. Like when, we, so when artists are like, "Man, I'm trying to make money," I'm like, "Dude, you got to do shows. You can't keep opening for people. You got to do your own show. Yeah. So you can charge the ticket price. Yeah, you get the money. You get the money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be super sold out. Yeah. You just need fifty people, bro. <laughs> you just made five hundred bucks at least if you're charging, you know, ten dollars. Yeah, at least. I mean, there even, it is. Even at five dollars, you know what I'm saying? At five dollars. Yep. More people will come just to come because it's five fucking dollars. Yeah. They ain't even going to be your fan. Like, I'm going to go and say, man, you know, because I remember I used to do this shit all the time. Oh, and Dirty Worms playing. Fuck Dirty Worms. Oh, you stupid. I'll pay for you. Come on, we're going to see the Dirty Worms. And as soon as you went on stage, they're like, oh, man, we got we to gotta come back and see these dudes again. It's like, hell yeah, tickets on you next time. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> yeah. We would, make, we would make more fans. And, and you know, it, it wasn't even – whether they like the music or not, they like the whole experience. Yeah. So they would still come, you know, because it was a good time. You know, and it's like, fuck it, we're going to come. And before you knew it, you know, like I remember seeing, I had a whole bunch of hood cats in the Dirty Worm show. And they're like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, we buying T-shirts, we buying, you know, sweaters and shit. And it's like, man, yeah. it's because we had a good time there. And it was just something It's different. the experience. Yeah. And uh, the thing I always like to say about it is it's really presentation. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, you don't have to be into that style of music or nothing, but it's it's the whole presentation of the experience of when you come to the show, it's from when you walk up to the door, you're like, yo, these they got, like, banners and all kind of shit. Yeah. You go inside, man, they got a whole store over here. Yeah. Then you're waiting. 
we come out. It's a whole like you know we got lights and shit and smoke and shit going on, mm-hmm. and so it, it's more of an experience. And that's what I would tell people. Okay, so now you got your fans. You got to up your show. Yeah. See, when we took, <laughs> we took a lot of that from you, man. Like people don't. I try to tell people that shit all the time. We took a lot of that shit from you because you used to put us on game all the time. You know what I'm saying? I guess these other motherfuckers wasn't listening. But we, I remember we used to get up the when the bogos when the lights would would we put our fucking logos yeah. all over the walls. We'd have uh, drop backs in, in the backgrounds and shit. And man, we just had all sorts of shit going. Like we we got our own microphones. I still got those microphones, the cordless microphone. Everybody everybody want to have a cordless microphone, but nobody <laughs> nobody, nobody want to go spend no that money. money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody no want money on it. <laughs> and, and I, you told me this one time, dog, and I, it shit stuck with me forever. I just think it's the funniest shit ever, but. You were like, man, I'm going to let you use my microphone. You want me to take my condom off and let you use that shit next, too? <laughs> I was like, man, that's funny as fuck. Like, straight up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't using my mic. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, hey, man. Get your own shit. Oh, you. You okay. don't you don't show up to work without your hammer. You, you, you a carpenter. You don't show up to work without your hammer. Yeah, exactly. Man, you going like, to borrow somebody else's? That's how I would know if somebody's serious now. When I show, when I see them show up with their microphone, I go, okay, he's serious. Yep. Like, how long you been doing this? Oh, man, I've been rapping for a little Oh, you asking the sound man for a microphone? Yeah. Now, I can understand if you just impromptu just showed up. Out, you know, it wasn't planned. Yeah. But if you come in to do your show. Yeah, straight up. Or you're you're on the bill tonight and you ain't got your your equipment, your shit. Oh, you better be man, there. the DJ fucking much. Wait, wait, wait. You're relying on somebody else to play your shit? Yeah. Come on, man. You got to invest in your own shit. Like, yeah. And then I've had people say that to me, too. When they do do that. They come back and they say, damn, Smack, you're right. I feel so much better. I feel more confident when I have my own playback machine playing my music, my own microphone, my own lights, yeah. my own banner. Yeah. yeah, that's what, that's what, you know, that, that's what. That's we what pull mean. up with a show. Like, we, that's, that's how we were able to do the mother shows, man. We pull up with our own sound, lights. I mean, we be, you know, we go and set everything up. We don't need nobody for nothing. I set up right here in the fucking parking lot if I needed to. Pull a generator and shit, build a stage. And, and just start going, you know what I'm saying? And we used to do that shit all the time, and and people love that shit. Like you were talking about them back back uh, backyard parties and shit. Like, man, we just pull up, set up, and go. Fuck it, you know what I'm saying? You come, you come, you don't. We man, we used to have hundreds of people in that shit, man. And those shit. are the days, man. Shit was that's, that's the things I don't see these people doing now. You know what I'm saying? Like, all I see motherfuckers do is get on Facebook and argue with each other about who's the best rapper, but none of them are out there. <laughs> actually doing anything like man you know what i'm saying like there's a lot of hard artists out here they could be they could be getting together and putting these shows on and if, you know let's say this this guy got 50 fans and this guy got 50 fans that guy got that's 50 what fans. i'm saying that's 150 people in your door and then you putting them on your partners you know what i'm saying so it's like why wouldn't you do that shit but they they want to sit back and let somebody else do the hard work for them that's the right. problem and early on that's what i was trying to explain to artists that would open for us i be like look i ain't finna pay you I'm gonna show you something. You see all these people here? So you want me to give you a cut of this that I built? No, you tell your people you come in here. We're gonna see at the door. I'm gonna be able to tell. I'm gonna see. Yeah, you know your fans. And you're gonna build your fans. Can you get 50 people through this door? Mm-hmm. And most of them could. Yeah. You know I mean, and I said, well, then, okay, come over here. And hopefully some of our, and some of our fans would be. Like, oh, man, I like that group y'all had open up. Now I'm following them. And so people see me and say, man, when have you helped me, Smack? What are you talking about? I've seen some of our fans at your show. Yeah. But people, man, don't see that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and so, but like you said, now you built your fan base. This person has their fan base. Okay, you got 50. He got 50. Okay, y'all do a show together. Now y'all, now y'all can split the money. Yeah, straight up. But if one person has it and the other don't, it's like, dude, what are you bringing to the table? You ain't bringing nothing to the table. You got to bring something to the table, man. And then then the other thing I I see that's still a problem is when acts are on stage or or on a show, why ain't y'all promoting? Oh, yeah. You don't even promote yourself. Then I'll even, I'll I'll go on people's Facebook page the day of the shows just to see what they say. They don't even post, hey, yeah, by the way, we're performing tonight. Yeah, I don't see. I'd be like, "Wow, crazy." Are y'all trying to build a fan base or not? And most of them got discouraged because let's just keep it real. A lot of them just don't have a fan base. Yeah, you've been rapping all this time and never worked on building a fan base, and that's crazy because you were too cool for like like how you were saying earlier, like with, with Tone or somebody, right? When you first met him, 
the way I built my fan base was this. When we had just 10 people come to our show, there was always that one dude that was just, oh, man, I love y'all shit. Da, 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 da. Hey, man, I'm having a birthday party next week, man. If y'all could come, and I would always do this. I don't know, man. I'm kind of busy, man. But just write down the address. Let me know, you know. Duh, duh. And I already knew I was going. Yeah. But I make him think. Probably not. I'm, I'm probably not going to make it. Yeah. And then, boom, I'll pop up at the party. Yeah. And he's just like, ah, oh, show up at my party, man. That's so cool. Yeah. And I would do that with a lot of the fans. And all that did was create. That created the fans. Now they talk. Oh, man, I just had smack. Yeah. And DJ Crash show up at my party, man. Crash got on the turntables. They did a little woo woo woo. And they was out. Yeah, because it makes them feel like family, you yeah. know, like, like the way the Juggalos do. You know, it's a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they're supporting you, so now that, that's that's where a lot of artists have it twisted. When the fans are supporting you, damn, this is deja vu, right, by the way. So we already died. Something happened. We just came back and started right here again. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on my Westworld shit. All right, so uh, when the fans come support you, what, what artists don't do is, okay, Mr. Superstar, you had fans come support you, but when that when those couple fans invite you to something they got going, go. Yeah. Make time to do something. I know you can't do it all the time, yeah. but you can't keep passing. You can't be too cool to not show up at events yeah. and little whatever it may be. You got to let them know. You, you don't, you, That's you how you build it, man. That's how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I be seeing some of these dudes, they too cool to do it. Or like I used to tell y'all, man. Y'all probably fighting potential fans out here, man. You can't be. <laughs> Straight up. Can, okay, yeah, dude over there trip, but dog, you can't go. You can't go fuck him up. That that might be one of your biggest fans, one of your biggest supporters, man. You gotta. Yeah. But you just can't be that easy accessible either. You that, gotta kind of learn. You gotta step back, like. So, like I said, when we, we used to do them, them uh, TV shows and shit, I would always get people coming up to me wanting to rap. That's just the most annoying thing in the world. Drunk motherfucker in your ear at two in the morning, rapping offbeat. I remember one time, I was like, man, we're going to go chill. So we went to a little Mexican bar way the fuck, because I'm from the south. So we went to a Mexican bar way the fuck up on the north. I'm talking about straight Mexicans, you know, the cowboy hats and the, you know, the fucking ranchers. <laughs> and we're watching this fight, the boxing match. I don't know what it was. And sure enough, some dude walks up to me, and he's like, yo, you dirty right? And I'm like, yeah, I already knew where it's going. I was like, fuck. He started rapping to me over Spanish beats, all off beat. He yelling in my ear. That's and the shit. worst. And I'm like, man. So you know, one of my little homeboys see it. He already see I'm getting aggravated. He's like, man, let me get this dude out your way. So he he go pull dude to the side. He's like, hey man, we trying to chill, blah blah blah. But I'm like, man, dog, you can't go nowhere. It was a point in time where I couldn't go nowhere without somebody trying to fucking rap to me. It's like, man, hit me up during the daytime when you when you sober, when you chilling. Show me something you recorded. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear you. I don't like rapping. when artists do. I get I get why they do it because they think. They watch TV all day, man. They they watch yeah. these stories yeah. of Michael Bivens and all them back in the day when Boys the Men came up singing or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, that works in certain scenarios. Yeah, man. but it doesn't really work because I don't care how good you're gonna rap to me. I'm gonna be like, what does the packaging look like? What is yeah. what's the presentation? Because yeah, you could rap like a motherfucker, but what does it look like? What's your name? What, I mean, show me something. Yeah. And they'll be like, I ain't got nothing. And I always be like, well, if you ain't got nothing, man, I mean, come on, it's 2020 now. Like, yeah. Now, I ain't got that excuse okay. now, man. Y'all got too many things going on. And uh, yeah. so, and I know that's one of the ways, and, and people still don't know how to make they self, I don't know, known Marketable. or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, when I first came to Austin, I was like, I was a battle rapper. That's, that was my style. Yeah. So I would battle everybody, but it wasn't the same battle they do now. Mm. It wasn't like a battle of, like, I'm going to sit here and go at you and try to put you down. Yeah. It was, you know, we had a party. Somebody going to rap. Yeah. I would always, my homeboy Toby, I would always have him as the pawn. He would be the pawn. Like I, I could tell when the rap niggas was at the party. I'd say, yeah, that nigga over there, he think he the shit. He don't know. I'm smacking Stallone, nigga. He don't know. <laughs> so I'd have Toby. I'd be like, Toby, start rapping. Toby can't rap for shit. Yeah. So it'd make all the, you know, the rappers yeah. come out and they get on him. Ooh, ooh, they spitting their best shit, you know, because there's chicks there and shit. Yeah. I'm just setting it up. <laughs> I'm just setting it up. I let it come around to me. And what they didn't understand is I didn't just come to jump in the circle and spit a freestyle with you. I'm already dressed for it. Yeah. And when I would step in the circle now, I would already have a routine to it and everything. So I just put on a show and everybody at the party would be like, yo. Fuck the fuck was that dude? That yeah. dude went the fuck off, and he had all kind of shit that was like, you know what I mean? 
And they never caught on to that for the longest time. Yeah. So by the time we were, you know, really making records, I had already left that alone. But that's how I did that. I didn't just come to rap with you. Yeah. I came to put on a show. You just didn't know I was coming to do a show. I made my job interview. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that just left an impression on people. And so that's how I always felt like I was able to infiltrate the Austin scene coming from Cali. Yeah. You know I mean, that, that's how I was able to get my name known. Like, Because I would go to all the little house parties, and that's exactly how I would do it. Yeah. See, and, I mean, you, 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 were, you were like probably the biggest name out here that I would still say in, in the in the hip hop scene. You know what I'm saying? Whether people want to give you your credit or not. You know what I'm saying? You, I think I'm one of them. You are like, but you know, people can say what they want, but everybody. Follows your routines, bro. They, they, they. Oh they yeah, now I've young. seen that. I've yeah. seen that, and and that's cool because I've always looked at what I do and what the Dirty Worms do. Is I've always said this. I think what we brought to the game in ATX Hip Hop is presentation and inspiration. Because once we did it, once I brought Roy Jones, because when they wanted me to do press junkets and all that in New York and L.A., I skipped that. Yeah. I was like, nah, nah. I need you to come now. To Austin. to Austin, because I need Austin people to see it. It wasn't just because I wanted people to go, oh, man, look at him stunt with Roy Jones, because y'all could have saw me do that in L.A. Yeah. Do it. I just wanted to show the power of influence I had also of I'm going to get him to come here. Mm-hmm. Even, you even heard a skit on the Tech 9 thing where he was, like, talking about coming here to do kibosh. Yeah. Because I talked to him about the importance of, hey, man, Doing you Austin. got your city on the map. I'm still trying to get my city and I needed, to, I needed to inspire them to be like, man, Smack brought Tech here. They did not only that, but they brought the M&Ms and Jay-Z, you yeah. know, brought it here. So I was trying to inspire people yeah. by doing it. So I've seen a lot of crews follow what we do, and I've never took it like, a, yeah, like an insult or nothing. But my drummer would tell you, he'll be like, I've seen everybody take a little bit from us, but then when those, when those uh, little Austin top 20s or whatever come up, we're never mentioned, and it's almost yeah. like we don't exist. And then if someone does say, well, what about Dirty Worms? It's always reduced to, oh, yeah, well, they got the dopest merchandise. And it's like, dude. Yeah, like they don't know you're a spitter. They got songs. They got, like, yeah. what are you talking Like, they got a whole thing. So, I mean, I, I get it, man. But um, And I appreciate that, too, because that's what we, um, that's what I set out to do. Is I just wanted to be, I just wanted to inspire people. And I've always said, I didn't really care to be famous. I just wanted to be iconic Yeah. to where when you look back at it, you go, man, but when they came in the game, yeah. they changed the game. It was like they're in their own lane. Yeah. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why we don't get mentioned because we're just in our own lane. So it's like we don't really. I, mean, I, feel, <laughs> I feel the same way. You know what's crazy is a lot of people, they do the same shit with me. They'll overlook us. You know what I'm saying? And like, uh, oh, yeah, PIE. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, they're yeah. a group. It's like, nah, man, we're not a group. PIE's not a group. It was a record label. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There's individual artists in that shit. But when they start doing that shit, they don't, they don't you know what I'm saying, put us in the, in the loop. You are listening to It's cool, W-O-T-P you know what I'm saying? But I think, I think most of it came from us being Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, we're not going to give them enough. You know, because you can't say we can't rap. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I'm a monster. Texas right. is a monster. You know, Tone did monsters. You know what I'm saying? But I think it just came from a whole group of Mexicans, and they were like, ah, you know, maybe we shouldn't let them over here in our And see, yeah, and I feel that because I'm half Mexican. Yeah. So I always felt like in circles I wrapped in, I had to, like, I I felt that. You know, I half felt it because, you know. But I knew it was because, like, oh, this guy coming here. But I also felt that. So, like, other rappers like you guys, Trampia, Mm -hmm. uh, the Corruptive Ones, also Hard Mob. I would always feel like, yeah, man, y'all just got to keep pressure on their neck because sometimes Mexican rappers had that stigma for having oh, this sound. Man. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you know when was, you would hear it and be like, I was ah. about to tell you that, too. I was waiting for you to finish. That that shit is the <laughs> fucking pet peeve, dude. Like, it's, that, that was the hardest part of, of, of trying to get people to buy the records. I don't listen to that. What's that? What what is that you don't listen to? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't I don't think they thought I y'all were like gonna be the lo- set out the game. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we're from Texas, man. We don't we don't you know that's that's you know much love to them, but that's a South Cali yeah, thing. You exactly, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like we're we're not from there. We don't we, you know we don't really partake in that. But style I mean, it's cool too if you wanted to pay homage to it. I mean, because yeah. that's the roots. Yeah, but that's that, that's that's them. You know, what but saying? I get like, it. They, but I get it. I get but, it. But if, if people, as soon as they see you, they they think that, and if they don't like that. 
then they're not going to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just, it, it was, that was one of the hardest things trying to sell people records. Ah, we, we don't listen to that kind of music. Like, and I was, music that that, that's what I'm saying. When I was talking about y'all, I was talking about your song Fortnite. Yeah. And I was playing it for somebody, and they were like, they from, he's from Austin? I was like, yeah, man, this shit go hard. He was like, wow, I, you know, I think of Mexican rappers. I think, that, I said, I don't even look at him as a Mexican rapper. I just look at him as a rapper. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I've known you too long. And, and I don't know. Yeah, well, that was one thing. Like, when people would say, oh, Me- I, I hate when they categorize me as a you know, Mexican rapper. Now, I'm a rapper like you, rapper. Whether that you're might black be a or dope. white or, or, you know what I'm saying? You should like, come out with a project called I'm Not a Mexican Rapper. Yeah. I'm just a rapper. But, see, the thing about that is, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think... I don't want people to take it the wrong way and say, oh, well, he's not, you know, he don't want to be Mexican. He wants to be black or white. or You know what I'm saying? You know how people get. But, but it's you like, almost need that, too. Yeah, maybe. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, <laughs> it's just, just people talking shit. I guess because I'm, you know, I'm old. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. nowadays when, when you hear Mexican rappers rap, they don't rap like that no more. You know what I mean? Exactly. So now yeah. it's like everybody rap. Like, like what's that dude? Uh, uh, Peso Peso and... Uh, Gigi Garza and, you know, people like that. Uh, uh, Lucky Luciano. You don't categorize them like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So it, it kind of, the time kind of passed. But this, what I'm talking about is, you know, 15 years ago when we were first coming out. And, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, you bunch of fucking cholo rappers and shit. So I mean, I get it because I came from Cali and I knew a lot of Mexican rappers out there too. And they did have that sound. But I, I always thought it was cool because I thought it was still in their lane. Yeah. I mean, they were part of the club, the, the car club culture. Mm-hmm. Like Trampia, people would probably consider him like that. But yeah. to me, it was like, yeah, that's cool. He's not a battle rapper. He, Champion yeah. ain't gonna jump out here and battle rap you. Battle yeah. you on the mic. He's he's into his culture. Yeah. So I think it's dope. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. if you go to one of them parties, you want to hear that. It's no different than if I go to Miami, I want to hear some two live crew or some shit like that. Yeah. Some JT money. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to hear Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. hear. Yeah. What you there for? Yeah. So I don't know, man. But when you came with this song, man, I just thought this song right here was just this was my shit right here, man. We gonna get into this right here. This is part of my little shit, man. Dirty Vigante right here. Fortnite 100. Hey, check this out, man. Right here on WOTV. All these trap rappers scream trio chop on, but he was not your club. Yeah. And when people can't eat off your name, they'll run it through the mud. Hey, I, I called and shell to the feathering boys. Shout but out to my still bread with boys. And these pussies got the nerve to talk about me. Got the I'm the king of grind. Swing is poking like a porcupine. Got the pounds of that potent line, yeah. but don't ask for sex. I don't break them down. Represent from untopless. Yeah, I downloaded the video. I'm like, topless. Yeah. And next time you talk about the hottest artist, yeah. better have me first on your top list. Yeah. Microphone Sicario. Hottest thing on my barrio. And these bitches know that I'm two player like Lou, EG, and Mario. Sorry, ho. I'm about my cash. Got no time to trick on ass. Got no time to chase the pussy like a bitch. Keep birth, I'ma keep on pushing. I keep it rocking and I keep it rolling. Used to sell hair wrong, black as Kelly Rowland. Southside still holding, ask ESG. I'ma get a superstar like PAT. I hang with real OGs, known to get it popping. Have you throwing up blood like you bang for comp. The better way your options. On me your nightmares, have them think of Freddy Krueger. Got a wheel fight there. He can knock down a bear with them two, two, threes. This is real life Fortnite, knocking down trees. All about cheese like a dairy farmer. Just go get a job while you selling scholar. The price too high and the profit too low. Don't spend 20 grand trying to make one more. But what I know, don't listen to me. I put light of can on everything. Turn one into three. How many guns you pop? Zero. How many keys you cop? Zero. How many cars you got? Zero. They keep it one plus two more zeros with us. How many homes you own? Zero. How many businesses? Zero. How many wins is this? Zero. They keep it one plus two more zeros with us. All these trap rappers scream free El Chapo, but he was not your plug. And when people can't eat off your name, they'll run it through the mud. I clothed and sheltered and fed them boys. My last, I still broke bread with boys. And these pussies got the nerve to talk about me? Mad cause my money grinded like Ariana. Bitch. W-O-T-P. W-O-T-P. Radio. <laughs> God damn man, that was a motherfucking beast of a song right there. That's my shit. Yeah, man. Now walk, now walk me through that. That that video was dope. Like, what? Who the fuck made that? I know that was one of your boys or your cousins. Hell something. no, man. I, <laughs> I I found some guy in South Africa to make that video. Wow. So I was, you know, I was growing through the through the internet on YouTube and shit, and I was just looking through cartoon videos, and I was like, hey, this dude's dope. I gotta hit him up. And it, it took. Shit, him I might need to get one of them. That shit is hot. 
it took him like a year to get back to me. Oh, damn. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then when he finally got back to me, he's like, look, man, I got a six-month waiting list. And he's like, I put you on the list. And I was like, fuck it. Put me on the list. So then I waited another six months. And then he hit me. He's like, man, come on. Blah, blah, blah. Send me the money. Sent them the money. Sent them the track. You know what I'm saying? But I knew that had to be my, my song. Because I ain't done nothing, like I said, seven, eight years. Right. And, and you know, you know, a lot of my music is really fast, you know, Bone Thugs, Tech Nine style music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I said, nah, I got to come back and I got to hit them bar for bar. And I got to let them know that I'm back. And, and you know, it started coming around the time where motherfuckers think you can't rap. And it's like, you know what? I can rap. I can rap just like you rap. You know right. what I'm saying? Even though I, that's not my style of music that I don't prefer to do, I can do it. It's easy. So I did it. And I when I finished writing, I said, God damn, this is hard. This is the hardest video I ever did. So I was like, man, fuck man, it. I, I just happened to be watching uh, Real TV, Real Music TV. Shout out to the White Brother and Do Right. And they had an interview with you there on there. And I, I don't remember what I was doing, but I was, I was, I tuned in, watched it. I was watching your interview. And when you played that and I saw that video and I had it turned up, you know, in yeah. the house. And I was doing something. I turned around and said, man, that motherfucker slapped me. I said, dirty. I yeah. said, yo, look at this video. So this shit's dope. I said, "Dirty has arrived, man." This is this is what I'm talking about. That was dope, man. Yeah, I thought that, I thought that was one of the dopest songs. When you dropped that, 2018, 19? The end of 18. 18. So it was right there. I thought that was the. I thought that was it. I was like, there ain't been a doper song. Yeah. In 18, 19 since that one right there. That one was. That one was fire, man. And like I said, me that whole album. If you go listen to the Nostalgic Nightmares album, I think that that is my best album ever. I, I didn't push it, but tell them where what? they can get it. Plug all your shit real quick. Man, anywhere online, anywhere you you can find me at Dirt Brigante on Facebook, Dirty Brigante anything, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. I mean, any anywhere it's streaming everywhere worldwide. So it's it's not like it's something local. You can get it anywhere. Uh, if you want to get the full album, you can go to CD Baby get it. Um, like I said, I'm on anything. Just type in Dirty Brigante on uh whatever you listen to music on. You know what I'm saying? It's on everything. Dope, man. Tell them where they can follow you at on your Instagrams, your yeah, YouTube, like Facebook's Dirt Brigante. They took the Y off because they kept trying to flag my name, so it's just Dirt Brigante. And then uh, Instagram's Dirty Brigante. Uh, same thing with uh, Snapchat. You want to follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, everything. <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, thank you for coming on WOTP Radio, man. We. Uh Good to see you still out there and be looking for more from PIE and from Dirty. and What's the whole Brigante thing? Because people ask me that. Explain that real quick before we get out of here. (laughs) Really, it was like Facebook did this thing and they were like, uh, you can't uh, just have a single name. You know what I'm saying? You have to put your last name. So we were like, oh, man, put a last name. I don't have a last name. You know what I mean? Fucking Big Dirty. You know what I'm saying? So... (laughs) Jumbo was fucking around. And he would start putting names up there, and then he ended up putting Brigante on there, which he got from a movie. You know what I'm saying? Carlito Brigante from Carlito. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So he was like, "Yeah, it's fucking dope." And I was like, "Yeah, it's fucking dope." Stealing that shit, bitch. So I stole <laughs> this shit, and I was like, "Fuck it," you know what I'm saying? And I put it, you know, it, it, it's from Big Dirty and went to Dirty Brigante. That's why I named the album that shit. And then you know what I'm saying? Uh, Tone was like, "Yeah, I'm Brigante too." So Tone was on there, and then. Peanut was like, yeah, I'm a fucking Brigante too. So we just started kind of like, you know, saying if you was if you was a, a original to PIE, you started kind of putting that shit on there. You know what I mean? That was dope. I thought that was genius. Yeah, because now you know they they because when I think of one of y'all now, I think it, it's everybody. like it's it's automatic. You know what I mean? There's another marketing tool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like you got to keep us in this category. When you talk about one, you get you know it's, it's like that's all you got. Like you say Brigante. Who else is a fucking Brigante? And in, in, yeah. in Texas, shit. Who the fuck? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, it's the PIE niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We already know what it is. Just another marketing tool. That was definitely dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, people sure. think that we're like real brothers and shit. Nah. I mean, y'all are, though. We y'all are. Been around a long not, time. You know, y'all done fought like brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, most of us grew up together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, like I've known Jumbo and Peanut and them for fucking forever, you know what I'm saying? Like, plug, plug the store, too. Where, where can they find the store, man, uh, so people can 30, visit it? 307 West MLK, downtown, uh, 78701. If I'm not mistaken, right there on the, on the right there before you hit the drag, right here we're in UT campus, man. Just go down to MLK, and we're right there next to Pizza Hut, you know, Texas Shoe Exchange. Or we're about to open the website back up, Texas Shoe Exchange. So right, right now, right. this Corona got us, you know, kind of at a standstill, but we'll be right back, up and moving. Actually, the store actually opened up today, so you can go by there. All 
All right. Well, thanks for coming on WOTP Radio, man. And I'm sure we'll have you again when we have the video up and running. And, you know, oh, yeah. we'll, we, we'll be doing more of these. I just want to archive conversations and different things and keep Those doing different. your thing, man. You out there, you know. Yeah, I appreciate now, it. Now you in that bracket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I tell people, like, I've been doing it's 20 years since my solo album. So now when I look back at everything, it's like, man, look at all this we've created. And I just feel like I'm, I still got more, even though I'm ready to be like, all right, I'm, I'm going to finish it off right here. Yeah. And see, it's crazy. You say that. Okay. So before I even met you, like 1997, 98, my homeboy, rest peace, Bobby, he's lived across the street from me. He got, he got killed in like 2007. But um, he used to have a, a Baby Luke CD. And my uh, favorite fucking song on there was Liquor on the Curve. That was from the Major Players album yeah. in Cali. Yeah. And we brought Fatal out there and put him on there. Yeah. yeah. And, hey, I mean, I would jam that shit forever. And I never knew. Even after I met you, I didn't know that was you. I would just listen to the song. It was my favorite song on there. You know That's what I'm saying? Crazy. That's crazy. And then I was watching your DVD one time, and I heard it in the background. I was like, what the fuck? Like, hey, man, I that song from that yeah. CD when I was a kid. Like, what the fuck? That was our first little underground classic. Yeah. That was a hit, bro. If you on the Curb. Shit. Yeah, man. That was our shit. That was our first little shit, man. That was dope, man. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, super crazy. That you know that I, <laughs> I would meet you ten years later, and it's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was a fan before I knew who you were. You know what I'm saying? You and Fatal, man. What's up, to Fatal? Shout out to MC Fatal. He can, man, he can spit like a motherfucker too, man. Like, like I said before, I met him. I was a fan already. I was like, man, these dudes can't be from Austin. You know, I, I think the same way. Like, man, you know, Austin rappers really ain't too good. You know, this is, this is 2001, you know. Motherfuckers yeah. really couldn't rap. You know, there's a couple people out there doing their thing. Flow Mob. Uh, I remember listening to 2-5 Mafia and, you know, a couple of other cats out there. Of course, uh, the boys from 2-1, Sam Houston boys, of course. You know what I'm saying? But oh, yeah. People really wasn't on that shit like like they are. Like, right now, you know, there's a million rappers. But that's what I'm saying. So when they get in those, those arguments about the top 20, that's why I'm always jumping in being like, hey, man. Yeah. Y'all are talking about y'all top 20 because y'all are rapping right now. Like, there's dudes out here that's been running that race for years. You ain't even made it in the 10-year in, in the run bracket yet. Yeah, like, and you talking about you in the top 20. Yeah. Like, no, bro. Like, you don't, got don't, an album out. You don't even understand it yet. Yeah. I mean, you're doing your thing. You got a little buzz, but can we look up 10 years and you still got that consistency? You still around. Hey, longevity is 20 years. Yeah. Are, can you look back and say, Oh, top 20. So when I hear top 20, I'm thinking, oh, you've been doing it 20 years? Like, to me, that's top 20. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you start looking at it like that. Not, not just because you rapping today. Yeah, because that shit don't last, man. Like, I've seen people come and go. I've seen some of the best oh, artists some of the you best. think. And yeah. because they don't got that hustle or they got bad drug habits or whatever the th thing is, they just don't last. And they don't, you know, the money don't come in fast enough for them. So they don't, you know what I'm saying? They just... They trail off, and in six months, they ain't rapping no more. I call it perseverance. You got to have perseverance in this game. Yeah. If you ain't got that, you really ain't. I, I could look at a cat now and be like, yeah, you can rap, but you don't got it. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got what it takes to yeah. keep this going, this level of this. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, man, Big Dirty up in here, WOTP Radio, and we will catch y'all next time on yep. WOTP Radio, Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Central, right out to ATX, man. You are listening to WOTP Radio.